In this tutorial, we're going to model a freeform bench in Rhino. So let's open up Rhino and get started. Here's the bench that we're going to model. We're going to start by creating a series of curves. Then we're going to lock these into a surface. Extrude the surface into a solid volume. Model some legs for the bench. Combine the bench uh, legs and surface, the seat and legs with a Boolean union. Then use a Boolean difference to create the final form of the bench. So our first step will be to draw the curves. We're going to start by drawing them in right view. We're going to use the command interpolate curve, interp curve, to draw a curve through points, interpolated through points. I'm going to start by drawing on the y-axis, and I'm going to turn on grid snap. Since I want part of the bench to be flat, I'm going to start snapping onto the axis. And then I'll adjust. After I've drawn the curve, I'm going to click on it and adjust the control points. And I may turn off grid snap at this point. I have my gumball turned on so that I can adjust the points easily. Gumball's turned on down here. I'm going to adjust the control points, especially to um, straighten this part of the curve a little bit. Now, I'm going to draw two more curves, also in this, in the xy plane along this axis. So interpolate curve, turn on grid snap, draw my next curve. Adjust this curve a little bit. Click on the curve, click on the control points, and adjust them as needed. To get the curvature you want. All right. I'm going to draw my next curve now, another interpolate curve, snapping onto the grid, make sure I'm snapping onto the same beginning and end point. You could also turn on object snaps. and adjust your curve. Since you're happy with the shape of your curves, we're going to leave the right viewport and look at our scene in 3D. We want to move these curves along the x-axis so that we can lock the surface through them to give this bench some thickness. So 
So we're going to leave one of the curves in place, move the, the other two curves on the grid, maybe looking in top view. Then move the final curve. Move them to the width you want the bench. Now select all of the curves and run a loft. So the command loft is under surface loft. If we run a loft right now, and you can choose the fitting options, uh, normal, loose, height, for example, depending on how you want your loft to meet the curves you've drawn. Now, if you're not happy with your loft, at this point, changing the curves isn't going to change the loft. So what you can do is before you create the loft, turn on record history here at the bottom of the screen beside the uh, snaps and the gumball. Record history, select your curves, and run the loft command. Here I'm typing it in the command line. So we run the loft, and set the options. Now, if you select one of your curves, and you change its shape, the loft is going to change with it. So now you can nicely start to sculpt your surface and really know what it's going to look like. So start creating the shape you want for your for your bench. I'm going to keep this shape that I originally drew. And now I'm going to move it to the height that I want the bench at. Now we can either get rid of the curves or put them on a different layer. So I'm going to create a sublayer called curves. I'm going to move the curves onto that. So I select the curves. I've selected the layer. I right click on the curves layer, change object layer, and I can click the light bulb to hide the curves. We're going to do the same with the surface. We'll create a new layer called surface and move this lost lofted surface to the layer. You can check it by toggling the light bulb on and off. All right, our next step is to extrude this. Before I do that, I'm going to create a new layer called I'll call this solid and I'm going to put the surface on it. object layer. Oh, sorry, not yet. Uh, we, this is the surface is on surface layer, the solid, I'm going to double click to make it the default layer. So when I make the next run, I run the next operation, it's going to go on the solid layer. So I select my surface, and I want to extrude this. So there's a, a couple ways we could make this bench, we could extrude it straight down to the ground plane. Um, so that there's a, um, a solid base to it. To do that, we would make, first of all, a ground plane. So use the command rec uh, plane, corner to corner, and draw a plane that's wider than the bench um, on, the ground, on the ground plane, on the x, y axis. 
Now we're going to extrude the surface straight down to this plane as our boundary. So we're going to go to the solid menu, extrude surface to boundary straight. I've already selected the surface. Now I'm going to select the boundary surface. That's the plane. And this could be the bench, for example, if it's a solid piece of concrete resting on the ground, or a solid piece of stone. Our goal, however, is to model this um, as a bench with legs. So we're only going to extrude this um, a given thickness. I'm going to select a surface, solid, extrude surface straight. I'm going to extrude it straight down on the z-axis by a set, set increment. So in this case, I may snap down one or two grid increments. And I'll hide the surface, and I have my poly surface, my solid object. Now, this bench needs some legs to support itself, and there's a couple ways we could model this. One is with sub-object selection. I could select either the back face or the bottom back edge of the bench and use this to create um, an end surface for the bench. So to sub-object select this bottom edge, you press Control and Shift, then click on the edge you want. That's going to select one of the edges of this object. And then, for example, if I use the um, extrude handle, the circle on the blue axis of the gumball, I can extrude a surface down. I'm going to turn grid snap on. Pull that down. And to give that a thickness, I could select the extrusion, green circle, and extrude that on the axis. Well, we could do that for both the legs, but as you can see, we could run into an issue where this extrusion doesn't quite meet the surface. Of course, we could then try to edit it until it does, but we may, we may still run into problems. So let's take a different approach to modeling the legs of the bench. We're simply going to draw boxes um, for the ends of the bench, and they're going to be taller than the bench. We're going to use Boolean operations to um, remove the top of them where they're sticking through the bench. So I'm going to use the box command, box, corner to corner. And I'm very simply, uh, with object snap turned off probably, going to draw these boxes. So for example, in plan view, I pick the thickness I want, and I draw this on one end of the bench. I'm going to draw it up higher than I need it. Now on the other end of the bench, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to draw another box and draw it higher than I need it. Now I have these two edges projecting beyond the surface of my bench. I'm going to combine these with the bench by selecting everything and using the command Boolean union. So I'm going to go to the solid menu, union. The command is Boolean union, and I've combined these into a single poly surface. Now, I want to remove
remove the top of these where they're above the original surface of the bench. So it's important that I kept the original surface. I have it on another layer. I'll change the layer color so we can see it. So I have my surface here. And Um, I'm going to extrude it upwards so that we can use it as a subtraction marker to subtract from. So I'm going to, I can either use the extrusion handle on the gumball, the blue circle on the z-axis to extrude this up, or I can use the command solid extrude surface straight and extrude this up. Now, we're ready for the next step. We're going to subtract this um, cutting object from our bench. So I'm going to go to solid, difference. The command is Boolean difference. And it's asking me, select the poly surface to subtract from. So I'll select the bench I've modeled with the legs. Enter to continue. Select the poly surface to subtract with. I'm going to select this top of the bench and enter. Uh, I can check delete input yes if I want and then enter to finish and hide the surface and there's my bench. I've trimmed the edges nicely and it's all one solid piece. So that concludes this tutorial. Thank you.